watching films as a kid, it was always the, the stranger characters or the outsiders who were the most dynamic. They're the, they're the things, the characters that affected me because they're the sort of most alive. They're the most kind of complex. And it's just, it feels like there's the most meat in terms of acting. George Mackay, welcome to the Variety Lounge at the Zurich Film Festival. Thank you very much for having me. We are big fans of Femme here at Variety. It's such a kind of powerful and surprising film. Can you tell us a bit about kind of Preston as a character and, and what you connected to in him? What I found so sort of fascinating about him is he's so full of nuance, he's so complex, and yet all of those complexities are entwined with or hidden by this very almost larger than life performance. He's kind of become the character that he's created for himself and therefore now is the character he's created himself, but he's not <laughs> because of the character was created to hide something. In the theme of masculinity, it felt like so much of that was in the conundrum that was Preston. I think you're a nice looking lad. I'm a nice guy. If you disrespect me, fuck you up. Your co-star Nathan Stewart Jarrett plays Jules, who's a drag queen, which mm. Preston is uncomfortable with. Would you say he kind of constructs his own form of drag? Yeah, Preston, for sure. I, th I think the film is about drag. That kind of maze of sort of layers of identity was just so much fun to, to play and understand. And he has this hyper-masculine look, which is not how we're used to seeing you on screen with the, you know, the muscles and the tattoos and the sportswear. And... <laughs> <laughs> how do those exterior factors help you find the character? They were massive. They were absolutely massive because, as we said, that kind of is the character. I mean, it makes him sound hollow, which is not fair to the character or Sam and Ping's writing, but there is truth to so much of him is his exterior and the way he protects himself. And so to put that on, to be honest, I only really found that after working with Bookie, our costume designer, and Marie, our makeup designer, and changing my body as well. When I, when I spoke to the team and was lucky enough to get the role, I was much slimmer. I didn't have that body. And so the process of sort of trying to put on the weight, trying to put on that muscle, it does also give you a feeling as well that you can start to understand the very simple kind of animal power of like, I'm the strongest in this room. You know, I'm, I, could, I could beat you in a fight. And that's a sort of a very simple but clear route into Preston. He's not diluted by, by, by many things. He sort of refuses to be diluted by things. And then the tattoos and, and the, the costume was, was the next stage of that. So firstly with, with Bookie, our costume designer, we just kind of began the costume playpen because he almost creates characters within the Preston sort of characters. Like today I'll be sort of 90s laddie Preston. Today I'm going to be like Fred Perry old school working class Preston. Like, and we sort of tried a, a sort of mixture of all of these outfits and also kind of then went through the scenes and went, okay, what's he trying to say? Because the whole film is a chess match between these two men. And then the tattoos, it was always specified that he had a kind of neck tattoo. Mm. That was part of how he was recognizable. And it was, it was actually Marie who pushed it further. I kind of imagined something maybe quite small just there. And then it was her who suggested this collar. And I was going, like, okay, we'll try it. And then when it was on, it was like, oh, this feels great. This feels, I don't feel like me anymore. Your performance is so closely bonded with that of Nathan Stewart Jarrett, mm. who's really extraordinary as mm. Jules as well. How did you kind of collaborate and, and work together? As you say, firstly, Nathan is just astounding mm. in the film and such an amazing actor. And our way of working together was kind of, well, it was a mixture of just open and very pragmatic. Mm. Like we, we didn't have a huge amount of time before. We had a, a chemistry read that was our last audition together. And, and so we sort of knew the spark of what we could kind of get to or wanted to kind of keep exploring. And then we only really had a week before. And I think sort of the brevity of that week kind of gave a frankness to like, right, we've got to get pretty intimate. We've got to get pretty violent. We've got to really know each other. We've got to fall in love with it. We've got to do all of these things. So it's going to require us to jump in, you know, with, with all of ourselves. And, and that, was, that was sort of, I think we really met in that sense. That was, you know, that was also led by Nathan as well as the lead of our film kind of that, that precedent was set of like, let's not, let's not beat around the bush, let's go for it. It's also a very kind of physically intense bond you have on mm. screen and you worked with an intimacy coordinator mm. on, on the set. Was that important to you? It was, and Robbie, our intimacy coordinator, was amazing. So to have that kind of, that person in between to sort of talk everything through and also be informative, informative about the, the nature of the sex that we were having as well and kind of making sure that representation was fair and correct. And then the storytelling within it, because every sexual act in the film 
is integral to, to the story, why it's happening for both characters, what the other is trying to perform to the other, what it means to the other. And so there's definitely a journey. It wasn't just like, you know, this is the bit when they have sex, this is the bit when they kiss, this is the bit where this happens. It's a complete power play or a falling for each other or a destructive thing. And it's different for both of them all the time. So we spoke about how to articulate that. It was just amazing at adding a level of nuance and practicality to something that is just also very physical and sensual. And that's where things, the lines can get blurred without that. I think Femme is also very perceptive about how black men like Jules are discriminated against in society, even within the queer community. Did, did making this story make you more conscious of your privilege? I mean, of course, Femme has taught me about privilege that I myself have has had. I've come from a upper middle class upbringing of, of London. As you meet the world, you sort of see how much you've been encased unconsciously by your privilege. That just the, the fact that you weren't aware that you had privilege speaks massively to the amount of privilege you've had. And, and that's why I'm very grateful for the work that I get to do and you know, being part of these different stories where you invest in people other than yourself, where you're part of the telling of a story told from someone who has a different sort of understanding or experience of the world. You go, oh, right, I completely missed that. And I'm glad I know that now. Is queer representation on screen important to you? I think it's so important that sort of everyone's stories get shared and so often the industry has not reflected the the breadth of society and it's important that the changes that we're making now the kind of conscious shifting that we're having they're almost not needing to be that question mm. not being defined by the nature of the story or the nature of the person telling it so i think if we can make work of true intentions it will stand the test of time whether it's a commercial success or not mm.